the support button on our computer. So we'll get this, this thing going. So um, we're gonna be here for the next five weeks. There were uh, are 15 people who registered for this. I wanted to limit it to 15 people actually. Uh, 50, I found that 50 people for a mastermind really works well any more than that. It's, it's really difficult to keep everybody into the game and engaged and each of us to be able to hear. Um, so for the next five weeks, we're going to be doing the mastermind on the book written by Shelly, I guess you can see it behind me, Zabbitz. And Shelly's from Portland. Her book was published in 2019. And we're gonna to touch base with her in just a second because she's the, the reason that we're all here. And, and the reason I wanted to do this is because everyone I found for me, and this isn't about me, but I, I want you to know the importance of what an event like this I think can do for you. I found for me uh, being in the business for 28 years, it was one event that changed the trajectory of what direction my business was going and what where my life was going. It was one nugget that I picked up somewhere from somebody. And sometimes it not any event yes. that I thought I might pick up that nugget and that, that thing that would put me in the trajectory to success. I can remember a couple. Um, Frank Patrick, who was a realtor in Kansas City in 2007, did a, did a foreclosure webinar. And in 2007, I was in the dumpster, like many realtors who were in the business at that time. Our businesses were going south. Things weren't looking good. And Frank Patrick, in a one-hour webinar, changed the whole direction of my business and actually is the reason that I'm, that I'm here today. If he wouldn't have done that, I might have been cleaning urinals with a toothbrush. I have no idea what I would have been doing. I can think of another event with Joe Stump in 2002. Uh, he is the leader of Buy Referral Only who gave me some nuggets. And the one thing that he told me about was the ugly yellow sign. And we don't have time to talk about the ugly yellow sign, but I can tell you it changed everything in my business. Another one was a meeting with John Maxwell, who is uh, the leadership coach uh, that most people know has written 60 best selling books. And just things that he has said has changed a lot for me. So, what I'm hoping that you get from our event over five weeks is one thing, just one thing that can change everything for you. And so I'm gonna share my screen very quickly and then we'll bring on Shelly because she is the reason that we're here. Let me just hear, hit the share screen button. And hey Jim, I have a question. Yes, go ahead, sir. So who is that Nicole Pineda? Nicole, because she is an agent in our office. Nicole, oh, okay. agent here in our office. Um, and so there's about 15 of us. So here's what I am hoping will happen before we talk uh, to Shelly and spend a little bit of time uh, with her this morning. Obviously, this is our five week mastermind event. And so if you don't know what a mastermind is, it's really a group of outcome focused people who work to solve problems. So, and, and to discover problems and maybe most importantly, solutions. And next, it's a one-time experience. We're gonna be doing this for five weeks and we're gonna study Shelley's book. We're gonna look inside of her book, try to get inside of her head a little bit, see what took her to where she is today. And we're gonna to be led by me. However, there's no hierarchy here. You are all more important than I am. I will just try to keep the wheels on the bus, so to speak. And so you are, the most important ingredient of what we will be doing the next five weeks. And our goal is to have a common good, a common outcome for the achievement of every single person here. So as you know, today our guest is Shelly Zavitz. Here's, here's some things that people have said about her. Um, and you can look at them. I can't express how grateful we were to work with Shelly. The next one, Shelly tells it like it is. She is honest, forthright, smart, knowledgeable, and fearless. The next one, Shelly is nothing short of the perfect real estate agent. I'm so grateful to have had her on my side. The next one, Shelly understood how valuable our time was. 
when looking for the perfect home. She listened to what we wanted. And more importantly, she found listings that met our criteria. So everybody, we're here today with Shelly and she is giving of her time to talk a little bit about her book. I have a few questions, I think pretty easy questions for her um, and uh, want to know more about her. So Shelly, the, the first question is, why did you write the book? Why, why did you sit down, spend all this time in, in writing a book? Uh, firstly, good morning. Hi. <laughs> that was an introduction I've never had. It kind of made my palms sweaty. So <laughs> thank I you. That I all, I, I'm a fat guy, so I sweat continuously. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, first of all, I'm from Canada. And uh, when I first moved to Portland, I didn't know anybody. And I had this really grand idea that I was going to start a business and it was going to be kind of easy. I had a whole bunch of experience, about 15 years of experience, um, like launching brands for radio stations. And how hard could it be if it were like, I can do it for me too. No problem. I'm going to start this monster referral business and away I go. I'm going to go into business for myself. And it was not that way at all. It was one of the hardest things I've, I've ever done in my life. And if you've read the book, I, I have this like grand ambition that not only do I not know anybody, I'm going to start this referral business, but then also, you know, I'm going to be rookie of the year, obviously, because my ego said that's, that's the way, right? Mm -hmm. And I was really surprised at the amount of adversity I had to overcome and the type of person that I had to move into to be successful in the business. So um, I won't ruin the ending, but I got to a point that um, if I had finished the second year and I was like, man, if I had known, yeah. bam, 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 these things, I would, I would have had a whole different idea of how to begin my business and not make the same mistakes because I made a million, like it was just atrocious. <laughs> sure. I've been there, done that. Yeah. So I got out of the shower and I said, why, if there isn't a book like that, because all the books that I was reading was like how to be a mega agent, how to be the millionaire agent, how to have the biggest team and all this stuff. And I was like, how do you just start a really great business? And what, what things do you need to have, you know? So um, I got this cue card out. At first, this started as a joke. I got this cue card out, like the cooking cards. And it was... Um, the first 365 days in real estate. And I sent it to my coach who I talk about in the book. I'm like, ha ha, wouldn't it be funny? And she's like, you should totally write that book. And I used to be a writer in radio. So mm -hmm. I was like, well, I can't write a serious book because that's not my jam. <laughs> I mean, I used to write parody songs. So <laughs> 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 it's just not going to work. And I got 12 other cue cards out. And I was like, well, it would be cool to learn this. This is a story I could tell. And I, and I put down the book in about an hour on cue cards. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wouldn't it be cool as a reach back? Because so many people have helped me as a reach back to write something that so other people could find empathy in and relate to and maybe find courage in. So I wrote it in eight days, which was wow. crazy. I got up at 4.30 every morning for eight days and I wrote till nine till I started work. Obviously, the first draft wasn't the best one. <laughs> it never is. <laughs> did, you have, did you have a coach with you, Shelly? Say you that have, again. Did you have a writing coach or did you just do it? You just. I just did it. Yeah. yeah. Well, and it, I, again, like I used to write, I wrote for 15 years. So kind of understood the concept of, of keeping somebody through a story. And, and I, you know, at first I, I thought my mom would read it, maybe coach, and, and that's about it. And I let it sit for almost eight months before I did anything with it. And my coach was like, you know, if you don't do something, if you don't get it published, I'm just going to start sending it out, which no, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. it needed an editor. <laughs> yep. yep. As a matter of fact, I think everybody can see that my emails and even my presentation today, I really need an editor badly because it, every, it, it, you just need one, right? Yeah, and of course. So, yeah. You, know, you know, like you, I, you probably grabbed everything that you could to read it and to figure out how other people have done it. Um, you know, there's a book called The 21 Things I Wish My Broker Had Told Me. I actually used that book in um, 
classes I do for those uh, agents or people who want to be real estate agents because it tells it tells tells all. There's books by Dirk Zeller, a real estate coach you may know from Bend, and uh, his is more um, I don't know on a on a head level where yours is just the real deal. It's just you. It's just you doing your business and yeah. how you did it. Um, it's pretty messing open. it up real good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> over it's twelve chapters. <laughs> um, yeah, and you pointed at mistakes that you made. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a lot of truth in it, and that's what hit me. So the one thing, actually, that hit me the most when I saw your book was the subtitle, and mm -hmm. the subtitle is "How to Build a Successful Real Estate Business Starting with Nothing." That's the thing that hit me the most is starting with nothing because just about any agent I've ever recruited into my office came here starting basically with nothing. They're, they're not coming from Canada necessarily like yours, Shelly, but they're mm -hmm. coming from a part-time job. They're coming from a place where they didn't have any particular training. Um, and we know, I think you talked about it in your book or maybe I, I took from it that you studied the real estate examination, 150 hours to pass a real estate examination, but you learned nothing about mm -hmm. how to sell real estate. If I had my way, and I'll never have my way, the real estate examination should be 120 hours and then 30 hours with actually how to do the business with, a, with something like what you have, telling people the real story, because it isn't all glory, wonderful, perfect, and we use 5% of everything we learn on the real estate examination, at least for me, maybe that's dangerous, but that's me. <laughs> and so tell me, you started with nothing. So what does that mean? That means that I didn't have a database. I knew four people. Yeah. It, I didn't have a launch budget because all of my uh, money was in investment properties in Canada. And I, didn't have the foresight at first to think I need a launch budget. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I knew nothing about Oregon law or mm -hmm. Oregon itself. Mm -hmm. I didn't know Portland as a city. My first transaction was in Oregon city. And the first time I showed up to show the property was the first time I had actually driven there. <laughs> yeah. Like it was just, I just didn't know anything. Mm -hmm. And um, that's what starting with nothing is I'd like, had I started in Vancouver, BC, I mean, at least I could have spoken knowledgeably about schools or the neighborhoods or what's safe and what's not and transit even. I knew nothing. I'd been in town for, I think, eight months. Yeah. That's it. Again, I was renovating a property in North Portland. You know, it you was just, it was a mess. You were spending <laughs> your time renovating a house, really not focusing on real estate necessarily. So thank God for GPS that got you to Oregon City. Right. <laughs> and got you to the home. Thank you, the Google machine. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah thank goodness. So something in your book that also uh, hit my heart was your mission to express gratitude mm -hmm. and the importance of gratitude in your business. You talked about gratitude, um, intentions. Um, you, you talked about priorities, what you do in your business. Tell us a little bit about gratitude and, and how you express gratitude, Shelly. Um, I try to express gratitude in every single exchange. I think that we're of a business where our clients uh, perceive real estate agents as takers. We just want to do the transaction as fast as possible. We're going to get it done and then we're going to leave your life right? The statistics show in, in our NAR that um, I think repeat business is 13%, referral business is 20% for the average agent, mm -hmm. which means that we're not staying in flow, we're not staying in connection, and we're not becoming community with our clients. So actually, from the time that I've written this book, I, this has changed a lot for me. I have taken gratitude to a whole different level where um, I just finished a second book. It's with a, with it's with the publisher right now, and it's about marketing in a way where there's a book called I think um, the Go Giver. Yes. Have you heard of that yes. one? Yes. Where you like give to get. It kind of I take that to a whole new level. I don't ever ask anybody really for anything anymore. I give and give and give, and I become so 
embedded in their community that they wouldn't want to use anyone else because I, I have become such a staple in their lives. How I give gratitude is, is I show up um, telling them that they're important to me mm -hmm. and I, I flood into their business so or into their lives. So I do that with note writing. I do quarterly uh, gift giving. I don't really call it a pot buy anymore because I try to see them, you know, and I try to give them something that isn't just, here's another ketchup bottle for, for a barbecue. It's, it's more than that. It's, it's, I know I've done all my calls. I've, I've talked to you so many times now. I know how you're feeling. We're in COVID, you're feeling isolated and my gifting will be in relation to that. And, and, and when I send it, it's, I'm so grateful that you're in my community. And it, and, and it's that I have been doing that now for over two years. And I mean, I doubled my business last year. I haven't bought one lead, you know? So, um, Nicole, I think you need to mute your phone or mute your mic. There we go. Um, just a little bit of feedback. Um, um, so that's real. How do you find the time to do all of that? And do you do it yourself? Do you have an yeah. assistant? How, how do you find the time? Well, I do have I do have an assistant that helps with um, like like the planning of things. For instance. Um, I wasn't going to do a party last year because I couldn't have everyone together in Oregon. Yeah. So what we did was we chose um, 10 families a week and depending on what their needs were, like if they had young kids or if they were older or whatever, and we would segment them out. And then we did pop buys for six straight weeks. So we gifted and then the follow-up was, hey, do you want to go for a walk? Do you want to, because bellies to bellies, I couldn't do. Because you do the most connection with somebody when you sit and break bread with them. So we couldn't do that. So I was trying to figure out ways that I could still spend time with them and not disappear from their lives and show them that if they needed support, I was going to be there. So we did that for six straight weeks. I couldn't physically make all of that happen myself. So we got together and was like, okay, well, what are we going to order? What are we going to deliver it in? And of course she helped me package it. But then after that, it's always my face. It's always my phone call. It's always me that they're hearing from. It's my voice. I don't have someone that dials for me. That's, I just, I don't know. We are a human business. And if, if COVID hasn't shown us that, I mean, I don't know what other proof we need. Anybody who does a human business where they spend time and care for their clients, they doubled their business last year. The ones that were trying to just do it easy and buy the leads and work with strangers. I mean, they really struggled, right? So mm -hmm. I don't think we need better proof than that. I think that's what's gonna separate us, agents like yourself and those of us who have listened to what you're saying and try to adopt it in their business because it still is a people business. And there's gonna be the Zillows of the world. There's gonna be sure, yeah. you know, those people that are gonna be there. But for the people, um, the people still need us and right. we need them. And we need to show that we care and show the gratitude uh, as well. So um, that's a wonderful thing that you're doing. Um, it sounds like a huge amount of work and that's where a lot of us leave the room because it is a lot of work. It is a lot and, of work. Yeah. So I work 12 hours a day for sure. And but, but I, I work broke, for every lead. You broke it down, right? So you broke it down. So it was something you could do to, yes. with the numbers, right? Consistently. So the, consistently. Like you can't just like give a gift and then walk away for 12 months. It has to, you have to plan, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so consistently following that plan, starting small, building big, mm -hmm. and then be, being the one to make the contact, not your assistant, not that's somebody right. that's not you, right? Exactly. Um, fantastic. Um, so if there was one thing from your book that you would want us to take from your book, and we're going to be doing this for five weeks. This, mm -hmm. this week, um, I ask that we, we read the first uh, two chapters of your book. So um, when you're off the call, we'll be discussing, you know, things in the first two chapters. But what what is you know one thing that you would hope everybody who reads this book would go 
oh my God, that's that's what I needed to know. What what is the one thing, if there is a one thing, Shelley, not to put you on the spot, because you have so many things <laughs> that we can adapt in our business yeah. that is going to help us to grow. I guess overall, the overarching thing that I try to because a lot of new agents reach out to me consistently. Like, it's remarkable. I, I heard from somebody from Israel today, mm -hmm. like just bananas. Um, the one thing that I think that I find myself saying the most is even if you hang your license with another brokerage and they're pretty big and they supply you with all your marketing and all the things, you are still a startup business. You still need to operate like a business and have all the things ingredients that a business would have you and Google are kind of the same. You're just on different levels. Right. And I started the new agent missions because of that, because I, I really felt that one of the things that especially new agents were forgetting was, okay, well, I'm just going to, you know, get my license and then all my friends and family are going to work with me and I'm, I'm just going to set my own hours and do these things and I'm going to make all this money and that just isn't how it works. You have to have a plan, like every business, you know, you have to have um, an idea about finances. That's another thing I talk a lot about a new agent is the flow of money through a business because the mismanagement of, of money in a business is one of the first things that I end up talking to somebody out out of because I'm like, well, you need a launch budget because trust me, I didn't have one and it was a nightmare. <laughs> and then also once you make a check, how, how do you manage it? Like a business, not like a person. And I think that when you come from a W-2 and you, you kind of forget, oh, right, I have the tax guy. And you know, mm -hmm. right now in missions, we're doing uh, week seven and it's called, where's my money? Where's my money, honey? Yeah, and the trainer is uh, Tammy Wittren, and she crawled out of $650,000 worth of debt out of the Great Recession, did not claim bankruptcy, and she explains how she did it, how to save, because now she's looking towards retirement, she's going to be able to do that. And there was all these like easy, basic things that she just started to implement that allows you to retire. Like, do, should we work forever? No. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so that's a long answer. Sorry. Well, but it was a great <laughs> answer. And I think it, it leads into one of the things that you talk about in your book about you have to have a roadmap to know where you're going and how to get there. And without exactly. a roadmap, you can't do it. Yeah. Um, how do you know you're successful if you didn't decide? You know, what, what, it, what is success to you and what is success to me are totally different. So if you haven't written it down as an intention, you know, I am this, I have this, I, I live this, and you don't have it quite yet, but you've written it down. As soon as you get there, you're going to look back and go, holy, I'm amazing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And all those little failures and rejections and the pain to get there, that's just a rite of passage to the awesome that you're going to. Yeah. So uh, before we let you go, and thank you so much for being here, um, Tell us about your new agent 365 missions training. Now, I know you, you started it. You mentioned you're in week seven, but if I have read uh, well enough about you, you're starting it again in September. Is, is, am I right? Yeah, right at the end of August, we're going to do the next one. So that will be the third round. We did the first one last September. Okay. And then this is the second one. And it's not, uh, it's funny because the reason that I built that so all the proceeds that I made from the book, I didn't spend it. Mm -hmm. And I felt that it didn't seem appropriate because I didn't expect it to be as successful as it is. Mm -hmm. So I, I opened an account for it and all the money that was made went into making new agent, which is basically a volunteer program. I found 12 trainers, the best, like they, I couldn't even believe they said yes, some of them, because they're so awesome at what they do. And each, each one, uh, trains on 12 different topics. And what we do is we build the pillars. So, you know, week one and then week two, and then as we move on, we just keep building on the last week. So by the end of 12 weeks, you know who you are in business, why you're in business, and, and you have basically implemented everything that you need 
to be structured as a, as a business, not just as a real estate agent chasing leads and money. Like you can be successful and happy and, and choose the people that you want to work with. Like I'm so fortunate now that my niche is, it's so tight now that every, everybody that I work with, I don't have to have that one where I'm like, oh, I just don't want to answer the phone because this is going to suck the life out of me. I don't, I feel very fortunate that I don't have to do that anymore. So I built new agent for that, um, but it's not self-guided. You have to meet us on uh, Facebook Mondays and Fridays. So I'm on on Monday mornings and then the trainer and I are on Fridays. And then you have to complete a mission every week. And if you complete the mission, then you can win a prize. Uh, we have like box brownie, um, all things real estate store, hoping just sponsors that that gave us stuff to be able to do that. And it's just kind of fun. And yeah. what do we learn more about that? What where do we need to go? What do we need to do? Because you know we have um, ten or twelve people on this morning, and this will be recorded, so all fifteen of us, and even beyond that, I have thirty four people in my office. And about seven or eight signed up, but I know more want to do this. So tell us, how do we find um, New Agent um, 365? If you go to newagent365.com, okay. there's a button that says sign me up for August. And it's a hundred bucks um, for all 12 weeks. You get a workbook, my book, um, no cards. Essentially, the, the hundred bucks just pays for us to be able to ship you things nobody so, makes any money on this or anything yeah. so how many people do you have that have, have taken part in that are, are numbers in the important part or is it just making connections with people who care enough to care about themselves to be there um i kind of like it small because i get a lot of phone calls <laughs> okay yeah <laughs> uh yeah. right now we're at 115 is in this one um but I, I don't want it to get so big that I, I can't participate with people and help them. Cause there's a lot of really great questions. Like, especially we went through um, how to choose a mentor, coach, um, accountability partner and visionary. There was struggle, especially finding accountability partners for some agents that were in places where there wasn't another new agent around, you know? So how do we, so now we have like coast to coast people connected to try and help each other through the hurdles. So I, I'm kind of proud about that, if I'm honest. You should be, you yeah. should be. And it's, and it's all because you came from Canada. You decided <laughs> to move to Portland and, and got into this. Uh, Margaret has a question, Margaret yeah. um, from so, Santa Clara, California. Do you have a limit uh, to the August? Uh, I mean, how many are already enrolled and? Not too many. I think we haven't really started advertising it yet. I think I only have like 15 okay. people. Well, you did today. So thank you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, it would be cool to have you in because it's just, um, we try to have fun. There's a lot of singing. Just just know that ahead of time. There is a lot of singing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I tell too many jokes because yeah. I don't think that, you know, this isn't rocket science. We are not saving people's lives. We deal with a lot of money. It's very stressful, but why not have a little fun doing it, you know? Yep. Yeah. So the stress of money often takes the fun out of this. And so maybe there's some answers by, uh, by participating in your new agent 365. And so, so it's newagent365.com. Yep. Uh, one thing I didn't even bother to ask you, and I'm sorry before we go, um, of course, um, Shelly, you're in Portland, Oregon. Uh, where where are you at? What company are you at? Are you with Hassan or are you? I, I'm not sure. I moved. I was at Hassan. I started my career there. All of my mentors are still there, yeah. um, but I moved to Dwell. Okay. For um, just reasons that I wanted to be in control of my own marketing a little okay. more. Mm -hmm. um, but we're. It was an awesome move. I'll yeah. probably go back one year. Yeah. So if people want to get a hold of you, should they just go to um, newagent365.com or is there another way that people can contact you? So, you can do that or you can go to shellyzavitz.com. There's a, a button that comes directly directly to me. I also have seller's guides and buyer's guides if you want to download them and steal them. I don't care. And what is, <laughs> what is that site again? Shellyzavitz.com. Okay. Shelly. Okay. 
Super. Well, Shelly, you spent 30 minutes with us, and I know you're very busy. And we don't know one another, but I, I hope we have that opportunity at some time. We're just on the other side of the mountain from each other here in Oregon, but um, uh, COVID has kind of changed things for us. So, well, you've done a lot for me today. Is there anything I can do for you? Um, thank you for asking. Um, I think what you can do will come from the group by their participating in the, in the things that you have and that you offer and by connecting with you. So, awesome. um, yeah, I'm never that far away. No, I please. always answer relatively quickly yeah. unless I'm sleeping. Okay. There's a limit. Okay. Everybody. <laughs> so our goal here today is to wake her up. Um, no, <laughs> no call her within reasonable hours, right? If you're going to talk to Shelly. Yeah. Shelly, thank you so much for being on today. Everybody give, give Shelly a round of applause. Uh, uh, it was nice to meet you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm very grateful. Hope we talk again, huh? All right. Take okay. care. Thank you. All right. So everyone, um, that was a great start to this five weeks. Um, and I think Shelly's the real deal. What what did you take from Shelly, if, if I might ask? Anybody want to step up to the to the table and mention what they took from Shelly that kind of hit them here? Um, anything, anyone? Nothing? Um, you know, what I took is, is her, um, her ability to share herself with everyone and, and to help us. So I hope that you found something valuable in what she talked about. And um, so let's move on. We're gonna move very quickly because we're only here for 60 minutes. I appreciate you spending that 60 minutes with me. There's lots of other things you could be doing, but I, I'm hoping as we dissect this book that we can take pieces of it that will um, speak to you, that will, will grab you in one way, shape or form so we can move forward and your business can move forward as well. Um, so. This is where we're starting. I'm hoping you all can see my screen. Give me a thumbs up if you can see my uh, screen. Um, and as I mentioned to Shelly, um, I need an editor really badly because um, I, I'm really bad. I go through things and create things and, and then I don't go back and check what I should be checking and spelling and so forth. So today we're gonna be talking about uh, chapter one and chapter two. We'll take this each week where you wanna take it. Again, this is about you. And we talked about Shelly and she told about herself where she went from the broadcast industry and she went into real estate. And um, the day one, if you've read the first two chapters, she talks about the excitement of the first day of walking in the, in the office. You probably remember that. All the excitement of a widow at a, widow at a funeral. And um, I've been there. I remember walking into a Windermere office when I came to Oregon. And I, you know, there were uh, 47 agents at that time in the office and I walked in and I thought everybody would shower me with their enthusiasm, enthusiasm, love and camaraderie. And none of that happened. None of that happened. Um, how about you? How about the rest of you? What did you feel like? What was your first day in the business or the first week? I know it's often joked about that uh, a principal broker might say to you, um, here's a desk, here's a phone and go to work, good luck, let me know if you need anything. What kind of experiences might you have had that you can share with us? Anything, anyone? I would just say, I, yeah, oh, okay. <laughs> thank you. Uh, for me, it was so the opposite of that. It was just, everyone was super welcoming and I love how even new agents are in, at exit and especially at our, our office are so willing to help each other. You know, oh, hey, I, I learned that last week. Let me show you and stuff like that. And so, and I have the best of both worlds um, having Juana as a mentor and working as her assistant as well as an agent. And so I learn a lot just being around her. But uh, yeah, our, our office is just such a teen environment that that's one of the things that made so me want to do So a little bit of a different uh, um, thing for you, Heidi, and, I, and hopefully for other people that come to our office. Um, uh, Margaret, tell me, how, how do you welcome people into your office? Because you're very hands-on, um, very involved in more than one office. Margaret, tell, me, tell us how maybe you make people feel uh, more welcome than a widow at a funeral. <laughs> yeah. No, everyone, um, you know, we announce uh, 
because we are separate, I mean, um, we announce it, uh, send out uh, a great announcement. We even do a, um, you know, we have a photo, a link to their email, their phone, and everybody usually, you know, writes back and says, oh, hurrah, hurrah, welcome. Anything you need, I'm here for you, et cetera. Um, if they're coming into the office for the, you know, a meeting or something that we have in person, uh, they get a rah rah and an applause. And yeah, everybody is, uh, I mean, it is an exit office. And so we are a team, team oriented and helpful to each other. Absolutely. Everyone. And, and here's the thing I tell people when I'm hiring them, I don't hire people that aren't players and aren't into our culture because if they're not helpful, if they are egotistical, if they, you know, it's about them, then we don't need them here because they're poison uh, to our culture at exit. So yeah. um, I only hire, you know, the good yeah. people, right? Yeah, and, and um, this isn't about me, but it's the same for me. I, um, my business plan is probably wrong, totally wrong. Um, I bring in people that I know uh, when they come to my door, with uh, a thought or a need that I'm generally happy to see them. And those people that cause the cancer that can uh, completely ruin a company just yeah. don't come. They, they just don't come here because they know that's not who we are. Thank you, Margaret. So chapter one's talking about that she said, what the hell was I thinking or how I stumbled upon my coach, accountability partner, visionary and mentor. And she talks a lot about that and her three gifts. So chapter one, she talked about the coach, the four people that really changed everything for her, a coach, an accountability partner, um, a, a visionary, and a mentor. And so one of the things I think we can all take from the book, you may not be able to gather all of them, okay? I think perhaps, I don't know of Shelly's class, um, you know, that um, her 365 uh, new agent 365, but I'm guessing uh, she mentioned that they work to find an accountability partner with everyone. And maybe having an accountability partner that is not sitting at a desk behind you. Maybe that's great. I think that's important to have one, but perhaps her, and I'm not trying to sell what she has. I'm just trying to take from what she does have, if it might work for you in having an accountability partner. And she talked about her coach, a visionary, and, and her mentor. So she really had the best of all worlds, uh, for sure. Um, it talked on page six, where she you know, moved to the USA with her partner. And she always felt that radio was just a gig, right? It was just a job. And I think many of us have done that before. And I think you all realize, if you're in real estate, it's got to be more than a gig. It's got to be more than a job. It's got to be an important part of your of your life. And I think, not in the book, but I think the people that are in your relationship, uh, your spouse, uh, your partner, um, whomever is with it, needs to be part of your business as well. They need to understand what this whole thing is about because it's unlike anything. You know that because you're all in the business. On page seven, she talked about uh, friends that said, you know, where she said that if there was anyone that would trust her, would it be you? And most important person in this whole thing was a president of the company who I don't know at Hassan in Portland, just over the mountain. Um, sorry, I spelled company wrong, but her coach was an important piece. So I would recommend for everyone, I'm not here to recommend things, we're reading this together, is that you find a coach, you find a person, if you can't afford a Brian Buffini, if you can't afford a Tom Ferry or a Joe Stump or anyone else, find a coach, someone that you respect and knows the business. And then one of the questions that she asked um, and her coach asked her is how much money do you wanna make? So I wanna uh, maybe write that down today. If you, don't, if you haven't written it down, if you don't know, one of the first things I ask everyone that comes into my office is, how much money do you have to make just to be able to pay your bills? And how much money do you want to make? And then we try to figure out the roadmap to both. First, you have to find the roadmap to be able to make the money to pay for your car and your maybe your student loans and everything else. But and so we know we try to cover that so we can correlate how much business do you need 
to be able to do that. And then how much money do you need to make to go to the next, to the next point? Of course, on page eight, she talks about something that was important to her was the rookie of the year competition. And then she talked about her sphere of influence, which she mentioned briefly today. Maybe it went right past you. Maybe it went on the book. I don't see how it could get past any of us. She had four people in her sphere. That's scary. And many of us have come from somewhere else and started in this business and didn't know anybody. And when I moved to Bend, Oregon from Iowa, uh, I, I knew Jim Truen and his wife, Cheryl, who's part of our office. And that was it. And actually, I didn't even know they were lived here until I moved here, which is weird, but I knew them from Iowa. Um, so with four people, um, how do you think you would have done with four people? Anybody want to jump in and talk about maybe what your sphere of influence was when you started and maybe what it is today? Anyone? Jump in. Let's communicate together. Does anybody have any thoughts? Marcus, go ahead. Hey, hey Jim, this is Christy from Nashville. I want to thank you for inviting me. Sure, Christy. To join. And yeah, I, I'm one of those people that kind of, kind of like Shelly, I moved to Nashville, didn't know anybody. And so that resonated with me. And it was at a downturn in 2007, 2008. And we know what was happening with real estate then. But yeah, I, I literally had to make money. So that's a great motivator when you got to pay the bills. And, uh, you know, I, I would actually pay agents that had listings to do their open house just so I could meet new clients. Right. So I, I would actually give the listing agent a referral if I made a sale off of their open Very house. Cool. I haven't heard of that before, Christy. So if they allowed you in the home um, or allowed you to do the open house of their listing, if you found the client, what, how did you arrange that? Did you pay them? 10% yeah, just like a ref just like a referral. I'd okay. give them I I'd, I'd offer them 10% because it was usually in-house listings, but you know, I I did not have a Sunday that I was not doing an open house. Very cool. I've never heard that before. No. So there's something I'm gonna take away and yeah, use yeah, my I, company sure, Christy. Um, thank you for sharing. Christy, I were you at one time in Frisco, Texas? No, I wasn't. I've always been in this area. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's so nice to meet you. And uh, we'll, well, we'll talk a lot more. Any other thoughts that anybody has? Um, Marcus, I know you had your hand up. Did you, did you want to yeah. say something? Jump in. Yeah, I just, um, I mean, I found it very similar. I mean, uh, being a former teacher in Eugene for over 30 years, I had quite a sphere, so to speak. I knew a lot of people. And I still do. Coming over to Bend, I kind of felt like, even though I knew Bend very well, my sphere for this area just kind of shrunk a lot. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I looked back and said, okay, well, what does my sphere look like here in Bend or in Central Oregon? And it was really small. And so that's the part I'm working on right now. It's like, you know, how can I build that up? Yep. You know, how can I continue to make relationships and build relationships um, and get that get that process started? So, yeah, uh, so it's, it's kind of I didn't have four people. I uh, right now, I think I have like 20 people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I, so I sort of identify a lot with uh, Shelly. Well, and we talk a lot here, as Marcus knows, that um, people who know you, um, like you and trust you are probably the people that you need the most. Mm -hmm. um, rather than going out and, and trying to find new people or emphasizing that as being your, the way that you're going to get more business and build your sphere, you got to take care of the people that are with you first, right? And, and often we go on to the next best thing um, and try to find more. Um, and I think maybe you know, something I learned from her today was uh, her commitment, her commitment to stay in touch with people. That's very cool and admirable for sure. Mm -hmm. um, as she goes on, she talks about her fear of failure. Who doesn't have fear of failure, right? But fear is one of those things that can stop all of us in our tracks. And so uh, I know she went forward to do things that she didn't think she would ever be able to do. And she faced 
her fear. Um, again, she talked about her accountability partner, her visionary, um, her, her uh, counsel to do open houses. Um, so a coach, not couch, but do open houses. We heard that um, just a few just a few minutes ago, right, from Christine in Nashville, that that's how she did her business. I know Marcus. I know that Lindy, uh, the people on this call that I know, most of them are doing that very thing. They understand um, that you have to reach out to people outside your sphere. Your sphere is number one. And other people, you have to find business. And, of course, she talked about a month uh, into open houses. She had no clients and the old pity party kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. um, so she talked a little bit about that. Maybe you have or you are facing the same things, but you have to move on. Um, so let's, let's move on. So she talks about her sphere. And I'm going to go to the next page. So chapter two is talks about her wake up call. And she found that she had to keep her feet moving. She had to face rejection. So I'd love to hear from, from all of you how you have faced rejection. Because I know I have. And I have a little bit of imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome is something where you just, you, you think you're playing the part, but you're not worthy because you're not that person that everybody might think you are. So imposter syndrome for me is an issue and rejection is part of that. I don't want to face rejection. So is there anybody out there that has faced rejection and that they could tell us how they work to get past rejection? Because that stops so many of us. Um, anyone that can contribute to how they face rejection and what works for them? Jump right in. I hear a microphone somewhere. Anyone? How do you face rejection? Um, well, I mean, after so many years, <laughs> it, yeah. no, it kind of rolls off your back. Does it yeah. really, though, Margaret? Does, do, I mean, uh, it hurts, you know, but yeah, and, and but, um, but no, you know, most of the time, it's either people it's it's not you it can be them it could be something going on in their life and you're just not a match at the time yeah um you know it, it just uh it's it's life so you just move on you know you, you think about it you write it down you um consider it and you know i always try to go back and say okay is there something i could have done different or mm -hmm. Mm -hmm you know, kind of do a post-mortem, but after that, uh, you know, pick, pick up your boots or, you know, yeah. something else, but uh, put your big boots on and uh, move forward because you can't stop. You got to keep going. You're not going to have a pity over one thing and just get so obsessed over that. I mean, just move on, you know, just move on. Of course, you know, the next one, the next one will be better. Just move Margaret, on. Margaret's a broker owner of, uh, <laughs> several exit offices, I believe. But of course, rejection comes when maybe somebody talks to her about coming to her company, somebody that she might want, and they don't yeah. come. Does that oh, ever yeah. happen, Margaret? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Or they come, they're here, and then, wait a minute, what happened? I trained yeah. you, they left. Yeah. What, 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 what? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so know. Shelley talks about owning it, feeling it, and let it go, right? Yeah. And then she goes on to talk about her workday starting very early at 6 a.m., I, I am not an early bird. I'm usually in the office in the seven, seven o'clock kind of thing, but I'm usually working until late at night. I'm kind of the night guy. Um, but I, everything that I read, um, there's a, can't, can't think of the book that just came out. Uh, and I know it's, it's a huge, thick book. Uh, and this author interviewed like three or 400 of the most successful people in business and life. And 80% of all those people started their workday early. They say, or at least the statistics show from those people that when their workday starts early, um, they're, they're more successful, 80% of them. I think more importantly than 6 a.m., and who am I, but then 6 a.m. is that when you go in at seven o'clock, if it's that you have a plan and mm -hmm. that you have a written plan 
that you know exactly where you're going and what you're going to do that day, and you take each of them. Uh, our our um, the person that owns Exit Realty Pacific West, uh, Rick uh, DeLuca, who's been around for years, 40 years teaching. Uh, one of the things he talks about is the list. He says, I got to have a list. And every day I start with a list and I do those things that are on the list first. I eat the frog, right? The expression is, I eat the frog. Who wants to do that? Um, but you do it first, get it out of the way, and you move on. Um, Shelly then talked about what is stopping you, and it's generally, it's you. And many times it's lack of work ethic. And uh, she talked about three things that are important, training, motivation, and resources. And you know what? When she talked about New Agent 365 and that she's brought on 12 people who she asked if they would be part of it, um, part of what she's doing is talking about training, motivation, and resources. She even offered to share her resources with us, right? And so that's what touching each other, being part of each other can do for us, reaching out for more training, motivation, and resources. And then again, we talked about gratitudes, intentions, and prioritization of, of your business. When we're done today, I'm actually gonna send you something which is my own um, uh, intentions um, that, and affirmations that I put together. I'm going to send it to you. I hope it will benefit you. I took it from Tom Ferry and added um, something on there. So when we're done today, you'll get an email with an attachment to that because I really believe in writing down gratitudes, intention, and goals. Um, so, and then page 21, we're getting eight minutes away from the top of the hour, but this I think is hugely important where she has her hot and warm pipeline. Does anybody use anything like that? I know I use, and we teach here, uh, Tom Ferry, which he has a do, doing, done board. Maybe some of you have heard that. I don't wanna be repetitious on what you already do, but something that's helped me is he actually has, and it, can, it doesn't have to be a board. It can be sticky notes, it can be on paper, but he has, here's the things I need to do today. Here's, you know, I'm, I'm, and then here's what I'm doing today. A do, doing, so I'm actually doing this. And when I'm done, I cross it off my list. So whatever you use, a hot list or a warm list for your pipeline, um, you can have a do, doing, bun, uh, bun a, a done board. So you're working on George Jones. So George, I know that this is what I need to do. This is what I'm doing and I'm done. And then there's never a done in her business because she can stays in contact with them. And then you need to post it where you can see it. Okay, so you have to figure out a way, page 22, how to be top of mind. And so tell me, what does anybody here do to try to be top of mind with their sphere, with the people that they're working with? Do the, the people maybe in, in their geographical farm. Anybody have any special little things they do to be top of mind? Uh, do you advertise on shopping carts or on park benches? I mean, what is it that you use? Not that I'm uh, advocating for that. What? How do you stay top of mind? Anyone, please. I did a park bench. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> and everybody knew me, but it didn't mean I got business out of it. Yeah. <laughs> Funny. What other ways have you used anyone to stay top of mind with your sphere? Usually, uh, usually what I do, I'm oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead. So usually what I do here in Salt Lake. So when I, when I became a, a realtor in 2017 uh, with uh, Exit and I affiliated with uh, Danny Bleak here in uh, Midville, Utah. Mm -hmm. So I always uh, look after like seniority, what they do and how they do it. And I try to, because I'm a, a fast learner when I see somebody uh, in the business way, how they do it. So I try not copy of them, but uh, you know, to, to, to follow them. And uh, usually what I do to, to stay in, uh, on top of it and sphere of influence and everything. So after I took uh, a Brian Buffini class, so Joe Nigo, uh, uh, I said a good word, and that stuck in my uh, in my mind. So, 
I try to be a mayor of my city where I live and uh, I advertise myself in my hometown and uh, I do like the door hangers, I do uh, flyers and I do everything a little bit, phone calls, like cold calls, but usually in the spring, I walk around, I walk around my neighborhood every single day, but usually in the spring, you see more people coming out. Yes. And then people uh, realize you, oh, so you are the agent, you just send me the flyer and then they, they, they start picking up the, the, the conversation. And I uh, picked up a few deals off of the advertising and walking around the neighborhood, people realize who I am. And uh, I think uh, every everybody in the, in the real estate business, so I think we have to, to stand up as a mayor of that town, okay. pretty much like you own. That's fabulous. And, and Femi, I, I think uh, photos that I've seen of you, you're tall in stature. Are, you're a pretty tall guy, big guy. Yes, I am 6'4". You're 6'4". Okay, yes. so I'm guessing uh, when Femi walks the neighborhood, everybody knows who it is. I mean, after the first time, they might see your picture somewhere or your business card on the door hanger somewhere. And so you can stay top of mind forever. Yes. You're, you know, pretty hard to forget because of your physical stature. Um, you know, for me, it was when I walked my neighborhood and I would do it, you know, in, in the summertime when it was very hot, always wore a suit. And when I would go to the doors, by the time I got to my hundredth door, I, I was sweating, you know, um, profusely and people felt sorry for me. So I think they just remembered me as being the poor guy that was working hard to get a transaction and to help them the big fat sweaty guy and so what whatever you need to do to stay top of mind cheryl uh niles truen is is uh, in our class today and sure i don't mean to pick on you but cheryl was just telling me of how she stayed or became top of mind in her neighborhood that got her a listing um just a few days ago cheryl do you want to just say what you did to become top of mind in a neighborhood kind of like um Femi becomes the mayor of his area can you share with that Cheryl? Sure. So I just started sending, I had a listing in Lapine and it was a former client who I sold the house to. Um, so I sent out postcards to market just from the promo shop of Exit. Um, and then when it went pending, I sent that out. So I have sent three cards um, when I was delivering the key on closing um, to Remax, I got I went back to the car. I got a phone call on that one of my postcards, and so we just went pending yesterday on that listing. Mm -hmm. But I have had three other calls, so that was something I just started doing. I'm also doing that in my particular neighborhood as well, um, and now I'm going to send out to past clients some seeds that I've actually grown from my own yard and just do some little things like that. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I haven't been very active doing that. Okay, so touching touching people much like Shelly has done in her business, okay? And let's let's move on. Thank you, Cheryl, for, for sharing that. So, you know, what Cheryl's basically telling us is that she sent out, how many postcards did you send out, Cheryl? There were almost 200 each time. 200, and it it's going to equal probably $8,000 in, in business right or more than that okay so staying top of mind doing the work um, and remember your referral list on page 23 um, they're your ambassadors your referral list is so important um, as sherry said in her book the quote i love is you start with mom and you work down from there you start with your mom and you just move on you got page 25 you've got to start with the plan and we talked about this today you got to know where you're going. And then she talked about SWAT. You can find SWAT just about anywhere if you Google it. And that's finding out, discovering what are your strengths, your weaknesses, your advantages, and your market threats. You've got to know what your strengths are to build upon them. If your strengths are in helping people find a first-time home, maybe that's your focus. If it's not, maybe that's your weakness. And you need to market your advantages and your threats. Page 26 talks about uh, the what. This is building what you want in dollars. And then of course, how you're gonna build it and why you're building it. 
She also talked about her geographical farm and know your accounting with an expense tracker. And I think, again, not trying to sell anything, but perhaps her new agent 365 could help you with that. I, I don't know. I haven't seen the class. I just learned of it. And then the 90 day rule, what you did 90 days ago will directly influence what you have today. It's called a pipeline, a 90 day rule, whatever you want to call it. And then page 30, she starts every day with gratitude, intentions, priorities, her hot warm list, or you do doing done board, reviewing her business plan to see where she's at. And guess what comes last? Usually what everybody does first, they pick up their phone, they wanna see you know, what's going on on Facebook maybe, and then they go to their emails. She does it last. She does gratitude first, intentions, priorities, hot warm list, review your business plan, and then emails. Oops, I almost goofed that up. And so uh, after everything else is done, that's when she does her paperwork and two personal notes. So I found the personal notes are something that people love. They don't get them very often from anybody unless it's a wedding invitation um, uh, or something like that. Personal notes can work. So she talked about working in and on your business. There's a difference. Everything in the morning is working on your business. Everything you do after the morning is working in your business. And so before we leave, I know we're one minute over. Are there any final thoughts anybody would like to share with this first session before we talk about next week? Please jump in if anybody has any final thoughts. Okay, well, um, listen, next week, next Tuesday, 10 o'clock, same time, we're gonna talk about chapters three, four, and five. And so please read those chapters. Please mark down the things that you get from those chapters that you think are important to discuss because I certainly miss things and I have a different perspective than you do. Um, so think about doing that. And we'll all get together next Tuesday. Do you think, is this something that you find beneficial to you? Uh-huh, yeah. I hope so. Let, let's put it all together in the next five weeks, see how we can build upon it, how we can grow upon it. And you know what? We've got a bunch of referral partners right here in this group. And we have people that we can uh, meet, uh, greet, and uh, be part of their life and them and yours as well. So. Um, I'll see you next week, next Tuesday at 10 o'clock. Thank you, everybody, for being here. I Thank you, Jim. It. Thanks, Jim. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Have a great Bye. day.